What's going on everybody? Top 10 Pokemon here. Yes, it is time for our first ever Q&A session. Thank you to everyone who asked questions in my previous video. I'm going to try and answer all of them. Uh, if you posted a question after I filmed this video, I will still answer it in the comments for you. Uh, so after I answer these questions, we will open up the Gengar EX box, see what we get out of it, and then I will unveil the winner of the Gengar EX box and everything they come in it. All right, so let's get right to it. With our first question from John. John said, just want to say I've been here for a very long time and I plan, I still plan on being here for the ride. My question to you is what is your favorite card amongst your entire Pokemon TCG collection? Why is it so important to you? Congratulations, brother. Well, thank you, John. I appreciate you sticking around and watching my videos and commenting and everything that you all do. Uh, my favorite card in my collection is going to seem a little cliche, but I'm going to say it's my uh, PSA 10 base set unlimited Charizard. Uh, the reason why that's important is because when I got it a year or two ago, I bought it in the collection in the PSA 1 through 10 collection. Somebody was selling and I got the whole collection for $2,000. And I remember people at work... Uh, not really ridiculing me, but be like, oh yeah, it's a good investment. $2,000 in Pokemon cards. Yeah, good job. You know, these are the same people that, you know, buy lottery tickets and all that. And now that card alone is, what, over $30,000. So it is definitely my prized card in my collection. I can't say there's anything else in my collection that's worth more. So that card means a lot to me because it reminds me at that time that I made an awesome that I made a really good decision as far as investing. So, thanks, John. Uh, John Rico says, favorite Pokemon? My favorite, I have a lot of Pokemon that are awesome. If I had to narrow it down to the very favorite one, I have to say Magmar, believe it or not. Uh, the reason why is because there was an episode in the anime where Ash uh, tried to battle Blaine's Magmar with his Charizard. And I remember Magmar just annihilating Charizard on screen. I'm just thinking, oh my gosh, Charizard's supposed to be the man, right? And here's here's Magmar just beating the crap out of him. That's pretty it's pretty awesome. And then of course later in the episode, Charizard ended up winning. But yeah, something about Magmar. I love fire type Pokemon, and Magmar is so unique. You know, it just comes straight out of a volcano. I don't know. Something about Magmar. I collect Magmar cards. I have almost all of them. But yeah, favorite Pokemon is probably Magmar. I like Moltres, Slowking, Haunter, but I think Magmar is my favorite. Jonathan Edison said, who is your favorite starter Pokemon? You know what? You're going to be surprised to hear this, but I really like the uh, fourth generation Pokemon. What, Chimchar, Piplup, Turtwig, I believe those are the starters. Uh, those are probably the least popular starters, but I love monkeys. Monkeys are my favorite animal. So the Chimchar, Monferno, Infernape is probably my favorite uh, evolution lineup as far as the starters. I really like Infernape. I wish they would do more with Infernape because you don't really see a lot of them, especially in like a ultra rare setting. But yeah, I gotta say Chimchar. Or Chase Gaming asked, why is Golduck the best Pokemon ever? I know, right? For real though, what do you think about the future of video games for Pokemon? I think the video games are strong just like the trading card game. You know, I, I was I really wasn't into the Game Boy games or, or the standalone Pokemon games. I love the Pokemon and Super Smash Brothers. I love playing as the Pokemon. Uh, but I could acknowledge that games like Pokemon Go, Pokemon Snap, you know, the, the, ga the games on Nintendo are all very popular and I think it's going to stay that way for a long time. All right, 360 collectibles said happy 1,000, dude, big congrats. My question is, if Johnny has 12 bottles of dish soap and then uses two of them, why is the sky blue? Answer carefully as the fate of the world depends on the correct answer. Man, a lot of pressure. I'm going to have to say the answer to everything, and that is Charizard. All right, Zakari asked, been around since 350 subs. Would love to know if you ever tried to get slash chase gold stars. I saw the Rayquaza Gold Star is about 26k in a PSA 10. Um, no, I, I've never tried to collect gold stars. I certainly wouldn't be against trying to, but that's just that was out of my generation. I, I've always been more towards Watsy, like that kind of vintage. But I could acknowledge the tremendous value and artwork in the gold stars. But no, I don't have any in my collection. 
And with the way these prices are going, I don't see me getting them in my collection anytime soon. So, yeah. Team Rocket Tyler. What's up, Tyler? Says, what's your favorite set and or favorite card? I'm not sure if I have a favorite card. I'll have to think about that one. But my favorite set is probably Neo Revelation. It's always a toss-up between Neo Revelation and Neo Genesis. Uh, I like Neo Revelation because I feel like it's quality over quantity with that set. You know, there's only 66 cards in the set. And you got cards like the Entei, Raikou, Suicune, Ho-Oh. Um, the end, you got your very first Shinings. My Shining Magikarp, Shining Gyarados. So... With sets today, like pushing 300 cards in a set, and this card having only 66 and half of those cards being amazing, I have to give my favorite set, uh, I have to say Neo Revelation. Denise asked, why are Japanese cards not as expensive as English cards? Well, Denise, I think it's all comes down to quality. The Japanese card stock is a better quality, thus being much easier to grade. And also, you know, particularly with vintage cards, a lot of those vintage packs, you were guaranteed a hollow compared to the English counterpart where a hollow was in like one of three packs. So I think that's why the hollows were not only more common, uh, at least in vintage, but also much easier to grade. Julio Torres says, thoughts on Yu-Gi-Oh! I've never been into Yu-Gi-Oh! I can acknowledge its influence in, uh, with cards like Blue Eyes, White Dragon, and that being a good increase. I think with the the original sets, you got some value there. It'll never be like what Pokemon is, in my opinion. Pokemon is just just skyrocketing, as you all know. In Yu-Gi-Oh, there's a very certain group. Like, everybody loves Pokemon. Not everybody loves Yu-Gi-Oh. Not everybody's aware of Yu-Gi-Oh. So I, I don't foresee Yu-Gi-Oh being the next hot ticket like Pokemon is, but there's certainly a lot of value there with some of the sets and some of the cards. Julian asked, what is the best Pokemon product to invest in? Sealed product. You can't go wrong with sealed product. You can keep it, hold on to it, you know, open it up, sell it individually, grade it. There's just so many opportunities when you have a box of sealed product. So, I would say sealed product. All right, Chris asked, I'm not a PokeTuber, but I've received my share of annoying comments. Way to stick it to the man and keep going. Glad I found your channel. I recently have started collecting again and my five-year-old son loves it. Here's a question from him. Who would win between Onyx and Tyranitar? Well, what's interesting is if you look at uh, Onyx's base set card, it's a 20-some foot rock snake that weighs only 400-some pounds. And if you look at Tyranitar's rookie card, he also weighs 400-some pounds. So I'm going to give that win to Tyranitar because he's got the arms and Onyx does not. And considering they both weigh the same, I think Tyranitar will win that fight. TAS asked, if you could add a new type or new mix of types of Pokemon, what would you choose? I'm not sure about a new type of Pokemon, but you know what I would love to see is a new type of evolution. Either like a metal type or a fighting type or a dragon type. That'd be pretty cool, huh? That's what I'd like to see. <laughs> this, this username cracks me up. <laughs> I know this is going to sound pretty gay, but... Question. How long do you think this huge increase in value of Pokemon cards are sustainable for? It's crazy how much a lot of these cards have increased so quickly. Congrats on 1,000 subscribers. You deserve way more for sure. Well, the way these cards are increasing isn't going to last that long. And what I mean by that is we've been seeing this exponential growth and it can't possibly be increasing at this growth. You know, you take the Charizard six months ago compared to the Charizard today, the percentage wise, I doubt next year that Charizard is going to be like $2 million. Not yet. Uh, I think it's going to slow down just a bit, but I think for, we're, we're always going to see an increase, especially in vintage sealed product, vintage graded product. But I don't think this, this growth that we're seeing right now is, it can possibly be sustainable in any kind of collectible. It's going to take some more time. Hunter asked, what do you think of Call of Legends? I really like the shinies and their rarity makes me think they are undervalued. Congrats on 1k subs. Looking forward to more amazing content. I really like Call of Legends. I think it is underrated. I love the artwork. It's got some really nice, uh, you know, very good popular Pokemon in that set and the shinies are great. I don't foresee this set increasing in value soon. I think in the future, of course, the all sets will increase uh, long, as much as long as you let the time go by. Uh, 
I think it is underrated, and I think it's going to stay underrated, but I do love the artwork in that set. Z and G Emporium asked, my question, how many pull-ups can you do? Hmm. Ryan asks, do you have any other hobbies besides Pokemon? I've been here since pre-100 subs, so excited to see you keep growing. Uh, well, Ryan, I have two passions in this life aside from my family. Uh, it's Pokemon and weightlifting or powerlifting, bodybuilding. I love being in the gym. I've been doing it since I was 15. And yeah, that, that is my number one hobby aside from Pokemon. I love video games as well. I, I find myself not being able to dedicate nearly as much time to it as I used to. So it probably goes Pokemon, weightlifting, video games. So yeah, those are my other two hobbies I really enjoy. Skaten, Satan TCG asked, uh, what do you do to motivate yourself to upload when you don't want to move or do anything? Does that even happen to you? Oh my gosh, yes. You know, especially when I was around 400 some subs and it wasn't moving. Like, I'm a tremendously busy individual. I have a full time job. I'm married with three kids. I get to the gym. I just have tons and tons to do. So, it's really hard for me to get in here and film videos. And I'm very picky with my videos. I don't just want to throw out video just to throw out a video. I have to have it, it has to be really well thought. Because I can't tell you how many videos I filmed and then scrapped because I'm just not impressed with it. I motivate, I motivate myself with just the passion. You know, I haven't been paid up to this point doing these videos. And even when I do, it's probably going to be very, very, very minimal pay. But uh, I just have a passion for the hobby. I want to talk to people who also have a passion. I want to interact with y'all. That's what keeps me motivated. Whenever I see people viewing my videos, commenting, it's like a train. It keeps it going. And that's how I just keep going with it. All right, Jonathan asked, my question is, what was your first PSA card? That's a good question. My first PSA card ever was a first edition uh, Hollow Togetic, 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 I just don't know how to say it, from Neo Genesis as a PSA 10. I bought that card for, I bought that card for $60 and now it's like you know, 600 some dollars, maybe more. So yeah, good first investment. That was my first PSA card. Uh, Jeffrey asks, what do you think about the current state of the Pokemon video game franchise? Well, like I said earlier, I think it's it's going to maintain its popularity. Pokemon's never really slowed down in the trading card game. Well, it kind of did in the trading card game, but video games has always been strong. You know, there's always the standalone Pokemon games. Uh, Pokemon Go is still going pretty strong. I mean, it died down for a bit there, but people are still playing it a lot. So I think it's going to be around for a long time to come. Schoolboy Gamer asked, uh, My question is, did you ever play any Pokemon video games? If so, which game was your favorite to play and why? Unfortunately, no, I have not played any uh, Pokemon video games. I know, I really should. Uh, yeah, I haven't. I didn't have a Game Boy as a kid, so I wasn't able to play, you know, uh, Pokemon Red or Blue or Silver or any of that. I would really like to. Um, but if I had to start, I would probably start there. I'd start with the original, Red or Blue. Amanda asked, I am new to collecting. What is your recommendation on where to start? Well, it depends on where you, uh, where your interests lie, Amanda. I, for one, love vintage. Most of my collection is vintage. If you are more interested in that, I would start with sealed, sealed product. You could start with sealed unlimited booster packs. Still very affordable. Like you can get them for a couple hundred dollars and you can do a lot with them. If you want to start with modern, I would start with any set that has Charizard in it. <laughs> because that's what's really carrying this hobby is the tremendous popularity of Charizard. So I would get graded Charizard cards 
or uh, booster boxes that are sh uh, that highlight Charizard or if you're looking to get vintage product I would start with sealed packs and go from there Gabe asked what was your favorite Pokemon game and what starter did you choose congrats on 1k and counting uh, a lot of questions on Pokemon games I'm sorry I don't really I my favorite Pokemon game was Smash Brothers how about that I love playing as uh, Pikachu uh, I love playing as Jigglypuff in Super Smash Brothers Melee uh, yeah it was my favorite my favorite game with Pokemon in it Grumpy Rhino asked when will I be able to trade a PSA 10 first edition Caterpie for a house I'm guessing by this month I'm guessing by next month at this rate well sir I can see where you think that uh, Caterpie Caterpie is very valuable. I just saw a base set Caterpie unlimited PSA 10 go for like four or five hundred dollars. I'll have to pull that up here. That's nuts. So the first edition Caterpie is getting up there. So I think eventually you might be able to buy a very small cheap house with a Caterpie. Who knows? I'd, I'd collect some if I were you. King Stabo asked, what's your favorite Pokemon artwork? Man. I love the Shining Gyarados from Neo Revelation. I would say the Shining Gyarados from Neo Revelation or the Holographic for Alligator from Expedition Set. That artwork is just blows my mind. I love it. Yeah, either that or Shining Gyarados would have to be my choices. Disgustipated asked, question, starting to collect for my six-year-old son and now I'm addicted. I know the struggle, brother. It's hard price-wise to collect much that isn't modern. Maybe a few here and there. Is it still worth it from this point on? Not looking to make a massive amount of money, just have some fun. Well, sir, as I stated earlier, I would start with um, unlimited packs. Unlimited vintage packs from Fossil, Jungle, you know, Gym Heroes, all that stuff. Because it's still relatively affordable and the prices will go up with steel product. It's just bound to happen. So you can keep them. Uh, wait till they go up in value, open them up, uh, but if you're going to uh, invest in uh, vintage product, but you're on a budget, maybe stick with some vintage unlimited packs. Kayoka Jiro asked, what is your favorite kind of pizza? Mine's pepperoni and cheese. Um, man, I love all kinds of pizzas. I like a taco pizza. Taco pizzas are delicious. You ever have one of those? They're not bad. Uh, I also like Hawaiian pizzas. I'll get to that story later on. Uh, yeah, taco pizzas, Hawaiian pizzas. I like those a lot. Derek said, We love your videos. Now it's time to reach 5K subs and screw the haters that made you push your channel even further. Congrats to the success. Thank you, sir. I know, even though I know you personally, my question is to you. My question to you is what is your favorite Pokemon of all time? Well, there, I'm going to have to stick with Magmar. Magmar. Uh, it's just it's something about the fire type Pokemon, the way he was designed. I even love the, the baby version, Magby. So cute. Then he turned to Magmar, and then Magmortar is pretty bad, eh, if you ask me. So, Magmar. Josh asked, Do you feel like investing in Japanese base set Pokemon cards is a good idea right now, considering they are older than the English versions? No. No. I mean, the Japanese base set has picked up some momentum, no doubt. Uh... But I just feel like your money's better spent sticking with the English English cards, English sets. Uh, some of you might hate on me for that, but I know people love Japanese promos and Japanese cards in general, but investment-wise, I think you can get a bigger bang for your buck when you stick with the English versions. Hunter Arnold said, what, or asked, what is your dream car if you could have one to drive around in? Well, Hunter, I... I have driven, I went down to Houston one time to visit my father-in-law, and he made me, made me drive his brand new Porsche. And let me tell you, it was the smoothest ride I've ever had. I was driving on the highways of Houston, which was frightening for me because we don't have highways like that up here in Pennsylvania. And it was just the turns, the speed, everything was so smooth. I could see myself owning a Porsche one day. Cooper Costello asked, how big do you see this channel growing? I could never get to the likes of Leonhard or Unlisted Leaf or anything like that. I would like to make it to like 10,000 subs. I think that would be feasible over time. Um, you know, I'm just here to associate with uh, fellow lovers of the hobby, uh, open up a few things here and there, eventually expand uh, my reach. But yeah, about 10,000 subs, I like the five-figure mark. 
I would like to get to the five figure mark with this channel. King Venusaur asked, when did you start collecting Pokemon? 1999, middle school, late 2000s? And if you stopped collecting, when did you get back into the hobby? Good question. I started collecting in 1999. Um, I stopped about the Gym Heroes, Gym Challenge sets. They just kind of burned out for me, I don't know. Uh, but I got back into it like everybody else, not like everybody else, but like a lot of people uh, when Evolutions was released. I realized, I'm like, this is my time to relive opening up, you know, a base set Charizard. And uh, yeah, I got back into it, uh, Evolutions era. Doug M asked, what do you think of black and white legendary treasures? I like the set having a subset. Is it undervalued? Um, I like, I like it. I don't think it's really undervalued. I like the gold cards at the end of it. That's a very nice touch. Uh, black and white for me is just, it just doesn't butter my biscuit, you know? I just, I don't know. I'm not a big fan of black and white, but I do like those cards at the end of it. The gold, I think, what is it? Like Zekrom and Reshiram maybe? Yeah, I like those cards a lot. Honda How To asked, what type of vehicle do you drive? <laughs> Uh, I do not drive a Honda. I used to have a Honda Accord, not anymore. I live below my means. I drive a Chevy Sonic right now. And I bought it, when I bought it, it was only three years old. I paid $4,000 for it. It had, you know, 60,000 miles on it, but it gets me from A to B. Um, yeah, I've always lived below my means. It gives me more capital to spend on Pokemon cards. So, uh, someday I'll get a nice truck or maybe a nice Porsche. But right now, yeah, I drive a pretty basic Chevy Sonic. Sean asked, have you ever played or wanted to play in a Pokemon trading card game tournament? No, I have not. I have played the Pokemon card game before, and I would not be against playing someday. Uh, definitely wouldn't want to be in a tournament. I'd probably go down to like my local card shop and play with, play with the kids down there to get my feet wet. But yeah, I would like to start playing someday. Just, just for the fun of it, you know, if I'm collecting these cards, I'd like to at least know how to play it. A Fortnite YouTuber asked, what is your favorite set of Pokemon? Neo Revelation. Just wonderful artwork, quality over quantity. It's always been that, between that and Neo, Neo Genesis. Andrew D asked, how did you get started in collecting the Pokemon TCG? Congrats on 1K subs, well deserved. I got started back in 99. I was in fifth grade and I was a non-conformist. Every, everybody in my class in elementary school was crazy about Pokemon, you know. It was just trading it, talking about it. I'm just like, get out of here with that. And then one day, well, Pokemon got banned from my elementary schools. I'm sure it did from a lot of people's elementary schools because kids were like, not getting anything done. So it was banned. No Pokemon cards allowed. So one day a friend of mine was like, you, you don't have any Pokemon cards? I said, no, I don't have any Pokemon cards. He's like, here. He, he handed me two cards. I said, no, man, I can't. I was a good boy back then. I was like, it's forbidden. He's like, no, man, just take it. And he put it in my book bag right before I was getting on the bus to go home. So I'm sitting on the bus to go home. I pull him out of my book bag and I look at it. And there's a base set ghastly and a base set haunter. And I'm looking at them and I fell in love. <laughs> I'm, I'm like, this turns into this? And they and they smelled like pack fresh. You know that, that pack fresh smell you get from cards? I was in love. I got home. I rushed to my mom like, mom. Mom, we gotta go to the store right now. And I went to the store, picked me up a two-player starter deck, uh, a couple packs, and I was hooked from there on out. Yeah. Todd asked, what made you get into the Pokemon TCG? Well, just that story right there, Todd. Somebody forced their cards upon me. It was a gasoline haunter. I loved the art. I loved the concept, and I fell in love. UC3 asked, when did you first realize that you were in love with Pokemon? On the bus ride home from school. Uh, just seeing those cards, it was the I could still smell them, you know. And I got when I got the two-player starter deck, it came with a booklet that showed you all the cards you can get. I remember seeing the Raichu and the Charizard. I'm like, oh. I was just totally fascinated. Game Changer asked, my question: Should you choose to answer it? If you could have any superpower, what would you choose? Man, that is a hard question. There, um, I would like to have telekinesis, like Mewtwo. Uh, the power to move things with your mind, like like Mewtwo, Jean Grey from X-Men. That's just a crazy power. That like stops all other powers. You know, you can have super speed, super strength, but if you can move something with your mind, <laughs> those other powers kind of become null and void. I don't know. I think that's an OP 
power up, if you ask me. That's what I would have. Ryder401 asked, what do you think will be the next hype set after Evolutions? Well, Mr. Ryder, I will be touching on that in videos to come. Thank you for the question, but stay tuned. I will answer that because I do have one in mind. Brody Jeffs asked, what is your favorite generation of Pokemon? Second generation. Yeah, don't even gotta think about it. Second gen. I love the Typhlosion, Slow Kings, Entei, Ho-Oh. I love the, I love all the Neo sets. Yes, even Neo Discovery. I love all those Pokemon. That's where you were introduced to Umbreon, Espeon. Love Gen 2. Jason asked, what is your favorite Gen 1 Pokemon? Magmar. Vabra Sanu asked, what color do you think the number 5 smells like? Hmm. I want to say turquoise. I'm getting a turquoise vibe whenever I sniff the number 5. Octavio asked, what is your favorite card and why? My favorite card? Probably the Shining Gyarados. As far as my favorite card, and not really my favorite artwork, it's the Shining Gyarados. Because it's the artwork is amazing, it's super valuable, it's the very first Shining card. Yeah, those three equal the perfect card to me. Shining Gyarados. Connor asked, what's another hobby that you enjoy? Well, Connor, like I said previously, I love powerlifting. I love being in the gym, working out. I love, I love training people uh, and showing them things. Cause believe it or not, you get some real yahoos in the gym that don't know what they're doing and hurt themselves. So I love showing people what to do, motivating them, and hitting massive PRs on my powerlifts. Evan asked, "What made you get into Pokemon card collecting?" It was my very first two cards that a friend forced upon me: the Ghastly and Haunter. I love Ghastly Haunter and Gengar. I love that lineup. It is just such a perfect evolution. Pokemon Resurrection asks, what's your favorite color? Mine's green. My favorite color is red, followed by gray, followed by blue. Hector asked, is a hot dog a sandwich? You're awesome, I love your channel. By the way, what's your name? Well, Hector, yes, I believe a hot dog is a sandwich. Uh, do you think of Subway? You know, Subway's got the bread folded up with the meat in it, and you call them Subway sandwiches. So, yeah, hot dog is a bread folded with meat in it. It's a sandwich, yeah. My name, I go by many names. Uh, you can call me Top 10 Pokemon, TTP. Uh, in elementary school, or not elementary school, in high school I was called The Game uh, for various reasons. I was just that dang good at everything I did. So, yeah, one of those. Nike said, congrats, love from Hong Kong. Whoo! You are all the way out here. Question, if you can go back in time and collect all the base set first edition Pokemons, would you? Of course. Or would you enjoy the experience of opening packs, investing and collecting in Pokemon cards as you go along your journey to catch them all? Mike, I would do both of those. I think I don't think anybody would not go back in time and collect these first edition base set cards. I would get all those, I'd get all the packs, and then I would open them all up and just love life to its fullest. Thank you very much for checking out my videos. I can't believe I'm in uh, being watched in Hong Kong. That's awesome. SG asks, can you make a professional guide video for grading Pokemon cards? I thought about doing that. I don't know about the demand for that. Maybe someday I could do that because uh, I'll definitely be sending out more cards to be graded. So maybe next in my next submission, I'll do like a step-by-step -step process of what I do and the costs and everything that goes along with grading. Red or blue? What's up, Rob? Uh, ask, if price wasn't a factor, what's your favorite artwork of all time? Hollow and non-hollow. Ooh. Mama. That's a tough one. That's a real tough one. Um, my favorite hollow... Oh, probably a Shining Gyarados. Yeah. It's just an amazing card. Uh, I like also the non-hollow for Alligator from, like I said before, uh, Expedition Set. I love that artwork in hollow and non hollow. So I would say Shining Gyarados, and then I would say the for Alligator from Expedition Set. Luis asked, My question Do you collect something else besides the Pokemon TCG? I do. Um, I actually got one right here. I like to collect Funko Pops. I believe these are somewhat investable. Uh, at one point, I decided to like try to get all of these. I'm like, you know, I'm going to try and collect all the Funko Pops. No. There is like thousands and thousands and thousands of Funko Pops and like tons of variations of each. 
especially in like the Marvel Funko Pops, it's really overwhelming. But I do like collecting the uh, the Pokemon and the superhero Funko Pops. I got a nice big wall right here. I'll show you someday. Yeah, I like collecting Funko Pops a lot. I think it's super fun and it's not a bad investment. No one dolls asked, what do you do for your normal day job? Good question. That's a very good question. That's the first time anybody's asked me that. I am a registered nurse for the VA Medical Center, taking care of our nation's fine, fine veterans. I've been doing that since 2012. And yeah, it's a wonderful career. Uh, definitely pays the bills and it keeps me very busy. Franz asked, what is your earliest memory you have of your love for the Pokemon TCG? Mine started with my dad while we were shopping at a swap meet and I saw a Charizard priced at $120 and fell in love with it just looking at the card and it motivated me to collect. Uh, yeah, it was my very first two Pokemon cards in Haunter and Ghastly from base set that was given to me by a friend. I fell in love right there and then. Kyle F asked, my question is, what's your holy grail? What's out of reach now with these crazy prices? Will you keep grinding for it? Keep up the good work. Uh, the holy grail that I have in mind, I would like to get one of three cards. I would like to get a PSA 10 first edition Slow King, Typhlosion 17, or Lugia from Neo Genesis. One of those cards. If I had one of those in my collection, that would be amazing. Marzian asked, when did you first get into collecting Pokemon cards? Elementary school. Yeah, on the bus ride home. When I got that Haunter and Ghastly. Oh, loved it. Uh, Tobias asked, what do you think about the Pokemon, what do you think about the Platinum Arceus display? I think it is so undervalued and I can't find any displays of it. For this set is pure nostalgia for me. For, for me, this set is pure nostalgia. Thanks for the great videos. Platinum Arceus, I think it has uh, a lot of great artwork. I think it was at a time where Pokemon wasn't as popular, so you're going to have a difficult time finding things like this, but yeah, I, I like Platinum Arceus. I think it has good art. Vinny asked, my question is just how far will we see the Evolutions booster box price rise? Um, I'm going to touch on that in a upcoming video, Vinny, so stay tuned. I will answer that fully. Uh, the answer is stay tuned. Philip asked, are you making a profit with Pokemon or do you lose money because you keep some stuff for your personal collection? Um, what I do is when I buy something, I'll usually, I'll say I'll buy a PSA 9 and then a PSA 10 comes along and I'll buy it and then I'll use the money from the PSA 9. I'll sell that and put that towards my expenses. So in terms of what I've bought and sold, I'm almost broke even. Almost. Uh, but I have a very nice collection. I'm very proud of it. Uh, I would say I would say I'm about even with, with the money that I've uh, spent and the money that I've made. Bryce asked, what was your favorite booster box you've opened? Evolutions. I bought Evolutions when it first came out. I pre-ordered it. I opened a box and I loved it so much, I bought another opened it and I bought another and then I bought another and I bought another and I opened all of them. I love that set. One of my favorites of all time. Uh, Bear Boy asks, my question is what is going to be in the Gengar EX box packs? Stay tuned. Zoo is back. Uh, asked, if you had $40,000 spare money, would you either buy a Neo Destiny first edition sealed booster box or some PSA 10 base set shadowless hollow rares? I think Neo Destiny will be the next big thing in line. Ooh, that's a hard question. Um, yes, I think Neo Destiny is bound to blow up even more. Uh, but I would have to say the PSA, de uh, the PSA 10 base set shadowless hollow rares. That's blowing up now. That is super valuable now. It's going to be super valuable later. There's just no debate. That would be the, the better investment. But yeah, the Neo Destiny booster box, certainly would love to have one of those. But if I had to pick one, it'd probably be the base set hollows. Random Twitch viewer asked, do you think fish can taste the salt in the ocean? I'm not sure about the anatomy of fish and their taste buds. So I'm not sure. I think if they did, they're probably so used to it, they probably don't taste it anymore, you know? It's kind of one of those things. Leto Bros asked, what was the first card that you got back in the hobby? For me, it was the whole unlimited base set my mom bought me for Xmas at 19 years old. Your mom's pretty cool. 
Sold my collection when I was young and wanted some nostalgia. Been, he been here since 2016. Um, my first card that got me back into the hobby was... Evolutions. I don't know if it was a card. I opened up the packs. I remember my first ultra rare was the Nega Venusaur EX from that pack. I thought that was pretty cool. That's the whole set got me back into the hobby. Jamie Chris VA asked, "What do you guys do when you submit a card for grading and it comes back with a bad score? Do you sell it or sit on it?" I sell mine. When I got my first PSA return and I got the sixes, sevens, eights, I sold them because I want nines and tens for my collection. I am not patient enough to wait for these sixes, sevens, eights, or lower to increase. I just sell them and I put my money towards what I really want for my collection, that is nines and tens. Andrew asked, how much growth do you expect from Hidden Fates set in the next two to three years? Uh, Andrew, I'm going to answer that in an upcoming video, so stay tuned. James Hernandez asked, what is your favorite modern Pokemon card? Anything after 2015? I honestly love the Charizard EX. I think it's actually, maybe it's, it's a Mega Charizard EX from uh, Generation set. Something about that card. Charizard's got like fire coming out of his nostrils. Looks amazing. That's probably my favorite card. Not that valuable, I don't think, but that card just caught my eye for some reason. Jeffrey Clark asks, what's your favorite modern set to collect? Evolutions. Yeah. I love Evolutions. It's so nostalgic for me. It's really increasing in value. I love collecting booster boxes and cards from that set. Zachary Williamson asked, After seeing your recent Skyrocket and Evolutions boxes, what is the next modern set that will follow? I'm stuck between Burning Shadows and Shining Legends. Uh, I'm going to kind of answer this question, but as I've been saying, stay tuned for my next videos. Uh, the answer is neither one of those is going to be the next set to blow up. Although they're both amazing sets, but like I said, stay tuned for my next video. I will touch on that for sure. Skullcap asked, what made you start a YouTube channel? It's a good question. My passion for the hobby. I started out, I wasn't gonna show my face. I was just gonna do like top 10 videos of my favorite artworks from each set. Uh, but as time went on, I'm like, you know what? I really wanna interact with everybody and everybody who else has a passion for this. So I decided to show my ugly mug and yeah, I just, I just wanted to share my passion for the hobby. That's all. Jack Shaw said, or asked, what is your day job? I am an RN at the VA Medical Center. That is what I went to school for, and that's what I'm going to stay at until my Pokemon collection yields me a million dollars. <laughs> yeah, right. I wish. Ciron? Chiron? I'm sorry if I butchered your name. Ask, what is your favorite Pokemon game and why? Like I said before, I'm not really into Pokemon standalone games. I do love uh, the Pokemon Super Smash Brothers, so I'd say that. Beast Mode 221 asks, "What's your f personal favorite booster pack?" <sighs> so I guess what you mean like is pack art, I guess. My favorite pack art is from Legendary Collections, the Moltres, Zapdos, and Articuno pack art. Pretty awesome, my favorite for sure. Michael asks, "What's your favorite EX era set?" EX Team Rocket Returns. I love it. I love the hollows. I love the EXs. I love the gold stars. That set is just so jam-packed. You got that gold star Torchic. Um, you got all the first uh, EX cards in that set. You got one, one of my one of my favorite artworks, Dark Slow Kings in that set. Yeah, EX Team Rocket Returns for sure. Bizalis asked, what got you into Pokemon and the Pokemon TCG? And do you play the Pokemon TCG? Well, let me answer this in order. A friend from elementary school got me into it. Um, do I play it? No. But I'd like to. When I get more time someday, I'd like to sit down and actually play the trading card game with somebody. Samantha Gray asked, Dude, how much do you bench? Bro, do you even lift, bro? <laughs> well, I'm glad you asked that, Samantha. My uh, bench press PR is 365 pounds which I think is fairly impressive because I only weigh 190 pounds. Uh, that is a non-competition weight. Uh, Competition-wise, I did press uh, 340 pounds, but unofficially, 365. Lumen asked, does pineapple belong on pizza? Yes, it does. And I got a nice story to go along with it. I used to work at a retail store and I worked with a gay man. He was my friend, very good friend of mine back then. I haven't talked to him in a while, uh, but he was gay. And one day it was his birthday and he, uh, we, we all pitched in to get him a pizza. And I asked him, what do you like on your pizza? He said, pineapple and ham. I was like, of course you would. Of course you want fruit on your pizza. 
And then I had it and it was amazing. I love the Hawaiian pizzas, so yeah. Charles asked, what is your favorite Pokemon, but more specifically, why? I want to hear the story behind if there is one. Uh, my favorite Pokemon is Magmar, as I said before. I just, I gotta go back to that anime episode where Charizard gets his kicked by Magmar in the volcano. Pretty epic fight right there. I always remember that episode because I'm thinking, because I had the cards, you know, and Magmar was an uncommon card, and Charizard was the king, <laughs> you know, it was the, the card you want, the most powerful card, and I'm like, I'm, I'm watching this, I'm thinking, my gosh, Charizard's getting a beatdown from Magmar, Magmar's pretty awesome, so, that's why. Greddy88 asked, what do you think it would feel like to be caught with a Pokeball? <sighs> I'd imagine it's like, I'd feel like, feel like getting sucked through a straw, you know, <laughs> and like living in a cup. That's the way I imagine it. I don't know. I feel like the time in a Pokeball would be much different from the time outside. Like, like if a day goes by outside the Pokeball, it only feels like a minute inside. I don't know. That's my take on it. Poke Mint Finds asks, is Vivid Voltage a good set to invest in? I'm going to touch on that later. Sorry, I'm sorry I'm not really answering these questions about um, modern sets and upcoming sets, but I'm going to make videos about these, so I don't want to spoil it, but I will answer that in a future video. Stay tuned. Unreal Kira asked, What made you start collecting Pokemon cards? When did you start to know about Pokemon? Uh, well, I started collecting them back in 99. I'm not really sure about the, what the question means. Um, I knew about Pokemon in 1999 when everybody else was doing it, and I really wasn't into it at the time, but then I really got into it. Um, but I started to know about Pokemon and the market and the value and everything. What I do now, back in 2016, when Evolutions came out, I really started to do research and really got into it. CJ Dewerks asked, Who is your favorite Marvel and who is your favorite DC hero? Very good question. Um, my favorite Marvel hero... I like the Incredible Hulk. I think the Hulk is such an interesting uh, superhero, interesting concept. Uh, yeah, I have to say the Hulk is my favorite Marvel hero. For my favorite DC hero, let me pull him out here. For my favorite DC hero is this guy right here, Shazam. Oh, I always I always refer to him as Captain Marvel, but I know there's like an there's an interest issue. There's an issue with DC and Marvel with the name Captain Marvel. I don't like Captain Marvel from Marvel. <laughs> I do like Shazam here, my favorite. I love the movie that just came out. Uh, I love the episode of Justice League when Captain Marvel, this one, was fighting Superman, one of my favorite episodes. So yeah, favorite DC hero is Captain Marvel, a.k.a. Shazam. And I do love the Incredible Hulk from the Avengers. Guzzlerd asked, who's your favorite Pokemon and what's your favorite pizza? Favorite Pokemon's Magmar. Favorite pizza. Either Hawaiian or taco. Yeah. All right, everyone, a big thank you to everyone who uh, asked me questions. I really appreciate that. I love interacting with you all. I'm going to open up this Gengar EX box, and then I will unveil the winner of the giveaway. So let's get right into it here. There she is. Uh, look at those beady red eyes. Look at them. Gengar is such an amazing Pokemon. It's a chubby little ghoul who doesn't love it. All right, I pulled them all out here. Here is the Jumbo Gengar. Look how colorful that is like jelly beans all around them that's an awesome uh full art card that's an awesome uh, jumbo card there so we're gonna put that up in the background right there and then of course you got the regular size one i'm not sure how valuable this is as far as like psa 10s let's take a look, quick look at it looks very nice oh maybe not never mind <laughs> hey this isn't my fault this is the way it was packaged in there but you can see the bottom is bent up from it being in that uh, plastic. So, I definitely would not grade this card, but other than that, it's pretty, it's pretty flawless. It's just a shame that it was packaged the way that it was. So we'll put him right there. All right, let's start off with uh, hmm, base set Sun and Moon. All right, now some of the cards you can get in this is those Rainbow Rares. I think that's our best scenario, the best case scenario. So yeah, the winner of this will be receiving all the cards that I pull. So I'm going to save the code card for them. All right, what is the card trick? We're gonna say four. 
four from the back. So in theory, this should be an energy. It was. All right. Here we go. We got a grass energy. Pelipper. Repel. We got a Corsella. Crab Brawler. A Drowsy on the beach. Grubbin. Fero. It's cool artwork. Makuhita. <laughs> a Reverse Hollow is a Carvana. And that is a common. And the rare is a Beware. Ah! Dud pack there, but don't worry, we got a couple more to open. We got Fates Collide. Look at that. Wow. I love that pack art. Alakazam is an amazing Pokemon. Look at that red gem in his forehead. Very cool. Fates Collide's got a couple hitters. Um, you got the full art Alakazams, Mega Alakazams. You got the Glaceon full art. That's a very cool card. All right. Uh, what is it? Three? Three from the back, I hope. Yeah. Shauna to start. That is an uncommon trainer. We have a Cincino. Gold Amber Aerodactyl. That's cool. Jigglypuff. Fennekin. That's a nice artwork. Running with the Chikorita there. Very cool. Snivy. Whimsor. Min Mincino. Mincino. I don't know how to pronounce these puppies. Ooh, boy, I'm tempted to keep this for myself, but I won't. I love Moltres. That is a reverse hollow rare. The Moltres and the rare is a marrow whack. Looks like he's getting ready to whack someone with that bone. So you got the the, uh, the uh, reverse hollow Moltres in that one. I think I'm more excited about that than anybody else. But all right, third pack. We got an XY Primal Clash featuring Kyogre on the front. So let's open this puppy up. These packs are so cheaply made, you can't even save them. So XY, so I guess that's three from the back. And we're going to start off with a Gorbis. And Dublade. Professor Birch's Observation. <gasps> Torchic. Hippopotus. Surskit. Barboach. Zigzagoon. The reverse is a Bunnelby, it is a common card. And the rare is a Gorbis, non-hollow rare. Dang. <sighs> so far this box is just not too impressive. With the pulls that we're getting, and then of course the Gengar, but we saved the best for last here. Here is the pack of the week. Let's see, one, two, three, come on. Reverse hollow Charizard. We have a Haunter's Start, Blastoise Spirit Link, Misty's Determination, Ghastly. Hey, look, Haunter and hey, look, Haunter and Ghastly, just like my first two cards. Sand Shrew, Weedle, Tangela, Ponyta. The reverse is a Nine Tails Break. Okay, that's something. I'm not really sure about the value of these Break cards. And then the rare is a Doug freaking Trio. My gosh. Well. We didn't get really any hits. I mean, unless you consider the uh, Nine Tails Break a hit, that really wasn't a hit. So you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna send the winner some extra cards in the mail, extra vintage cards, near mint to mint first edition cards. Because I feel bad. That was a that was a terrible box. But what else is new? I'm opening cards, right? So you know it's gonna be terrible. But I will send some extras to make up for that. Thank you to everybody who who've been watching these videos, who liked, subscribed, who asked me a question. I really appreciate it. Uh, to the win let's, yeah, let's do the winner. Let's do the winner. So here I got the uh, commentpicker.com. So we are going to put in the URL there. Let's see, filter duplicate users, blah, blah, blah. Everything else looks good. So let's get it. Get YouTube comments. So it should be about 90 something, I think, maybe 100. Amount of unique commenters, 92. All right. Here we go. Start raffle and pick random winner. Go. And the winner is Cooper Costello. Congratulations, Cooper. Cooper has been a long time viewer, comments on many of my videos. And his question was, how big do you see this channel growing? Huge fan, by the way. Been here since week one of the top 10 eBay auction series. Well, congratulations, Cooper. Uh, if you want, email me 
at my email in the, in the uh, description, uh, an address that I can send these cards to, and I'm going to send more than just these cards uh, as a thank you for your participation. All right, that's it. That's all I got today. I know it was probably my longest video to date, uh, but that's what you get when you do Q and A's. So I hope you all enjoyed it. Please like and subscribe. Check out my next video coming up, and I will see you all soon. Thank you.